right, so if you can't cool here with Simon Rex, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm good. I'm laying down in my RV on the beach uh, in Santa Monica, so I ain't going to complain, bro. Can't beat that, man. Yeah, I'm an RV guy. I bought an RV, and I uh, I just hang out in my RV now, dude. I'm that guy. Hey, man, you got the sun, you got the beach. What more you need? Uh, a couple things, but I don't think we could say it on here. <laughs> now, in a uh, couple of weeks, you're going to say goodbye to that sunshine and come over to the other coast for the Astronomicon. You ready for that? Yeah, man. Fuck yeah, I'm ready. I love it out there. Uh, sometimes sometimes you got to get out of hot bullshit Hollywood and go to the real real America, baby. Now, uh, have you ever have you ever done the Astronomicon before? Is this your first appearance there? This is my first one. This is, uh, this is my first one. Um, I haven't actually. I haven't done too many of these like convention type things. Um, I like doing them, so I'm I'm pumped to do it. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to get out there and you know freeze my nuts off. <laughs> well, I mean for for only doing a few, you're you're picking the right one to show up to, man. It's a good time. It's out in Detroit. You got that legal weed out there. I mean, you know, you're in Cali, so it's legal there too. But you know, nice little change up. Yeah, dude, uh, I love Detroit. I love Detroit. Um, so I'm I'm double excited. Now, now this con right here is run by Twisted. Are you familiar with the uh, with the with those guys? Yeah, I, I I I think I was supposed to do it. I almost ended up doing a tour with those guys. I think I was going to, like, years ago, I was going to open up for them or something like that. It never happened. But, yeah, I'm familiar with those boys. And uh, <clears throat> they, um, I, I think they're from Detroit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why the uh, that's why the con's there. It's their thing, their hometown. Dude, yeah, I'm stoked to come see what, that, what it's all about with those guys. They're like royalty out there. So, you know, I'm excited to come check it all out, baby. Well, you know, hopefully you guys can uh, do some talking, maybe set up a tour, maybe uh, do a collaboration, you know, do a track with them. That'd be rad. I'm always open for that kind of shit. Now, uh, at this show, um, you got uh, Frankie Avalon there. I fancy you guys uh, doing some dyslexic speed readers reunion. Uh, yeah, um Frank, I like Frankie Avalon better than Mickey Avalon. I think that's the real guy's name who we spent, who we spoofed. That's funny. Uh, I, yes, we we won't have Andre Legacy with us, but that doesn't mean we can't do like My Dick and shit like that. You know, that's like that's kind of our go-to song that people know. So <clears throat> I think, uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be great because I know in Detroit, we I don't know why, but Detroit is always like one of those cities that. It's always a fun show, so I'm looking forward to it. So at these cons, man, does anybody bring any weird shit for you to sign? Any, anything crazy? Am I going to bring anything or are people? The people, when they come up to you. I understand you, yeah. got, you know, you got your stuff, but the people, have you ever got anything weird? You know what I mean? Yeah, um, you know, again, I haven't done too many of these. Uh, I think someone had me, I think someone brought like a big dildo once. But I don't know. Maybe that's not that weird. But uh, maybe that's normal these days. But you know, again, I haven't done too many of these things, so I'm looking forward to some weird shit to sign. You know what I mean? It's right. almost like signing shit is a lost. It's almost like signing shit is a lost art form. With you know, everyone wants a photo nowadays. So I'm always about whipping out the sharpie and signing a big fake dick. <laughs> so uh, no one's brought up an 1821 video yet. Yeah, have you signed that, huh? What's 1821? Club 1821. Oh, I don't know what that is. Is that a porno? Yeah. Oh, no, not yet, but I'm sure it'll happen, baby. Everything, you know. Shit. I wouldn't be surprised. Bring it. <laughs> now, uh, one, one thing I want to talk to you about is uh, Free Loco, man. I, I just heard the track Arrogant American Freestyle. Yeah. That was awesome, man. It's glad to see you guys uh, doing your thing again. Yeah, yeah. We uh, so here's you want to hear a little quick story about it? Yes, I do. All right, so check it out. So me, Riff Raff, and Andy, we did three locos as a fun little side project. She was like seven years ago already, 
And uh, we put out one album. We toured for a little bit. And then, like so many other projects, this shit kind of, it's difficult to pull off a three-man music group when mother, one motherfucker lives in Florida, you know, and two, me and Andy are in L.A. and Riff moved to Florida. So it was hard to maintain creating all the time. And then Riff went and, you know, did his tour by himself, which, he, you know, this was always a side project. But for whatever reason, people love Three Loco. I'm always doing weird side projects. Like I got another one called White Boys with Andre Legacy and Beardo. You know, Dyslexic Speed Readers was like the fun side, the group project. <clears throat> so for whatever reason, you know, Diplo signed us. It got some good heat, you know, like everyone loved it. And then that was it. We just put out one album. And then uh, fucking here we are seven years later and Riff Rap hits me up. He's like, yo, jump on this track for my album. And then we were both like, damn, we should get Andy on here and do Three Loco again. So we we recorded uh, me, Andy got on riff song for his album and we just put it out and people are loving it so i think we might be doing another album together it's a long-winded way of saying i think we're going to do another album that's awesome man yeah now i i heard before there was talks of uh if everything goes well a possible tv show or maybe a movie or something like that yeah we actually had one so this is how hollywood is man some bullshit so we had, <clears throat> we did a pilot for Adult Swim, right, with Tim and Eric. They're like these really funny comedians that do like funny TV shows and movies. So we did a pilot with Three Loco, like this was years ago, like five or six years ago. And fucking it didn't get picked up, right? This is how a pilot works for, for you guys reading or listening to this. It's uh, basically uh, a pilot is like a, a network will shoot 15 shows and then they'll pick up, like, three of them, you know? Right. And this one didn't get picked up, so it just kind of sat on the shelf for a while, and that's it. And now, you know, maybe this next album will be the catalyst to doing another pilot, and hopefully this time it'll get picked up. You never know. Now, now in this day and age, I mean, is there any chance you guys doing, like, a uh, like an Indiegogo and have it fan-funded and start the show off that way? It's a great idea. Uh, it, that very well could happen. I think Andy likes that. And so me and Riff Raff always trust Andy with like, you know, the, he's really good with that kind of shit. Like Andy, he's sort of the go-to computer guy. He knows all the next shit. He was saying that, as a matter of fact, that might be the way to go. Is maybe we just do it indie style, do it ourselves. Yeah, man. I mean, that way it's guaranteed to come out. There's no bullshit behind the scenes stuff like you were saying before. Well, check this out. I put the pilot on the internet, so anyone listening, or you yourself, or is this a listening or a reading? Is this an audio, or is this for readers? Well, it's it's going to be audio, so they're going to hear everything we're saying. Ah, uh, suck my dick. All right, so um, so check it out. So if you go to YouTube and type in Three Loco Pilot Adult Swim," you can see it. I put it up, and the network got pissed at me because I'm like, dude, you motherfuckers, but he's going to see it. So I put it on my YouTube channel and they got pissed because like, you're not supposed to do that. But I was like, fuck that. Kimbo was on it. You might, you remember Kimbo Slice, the fighter? Fuck yeah, man. Rest in, rest in peace, Kimbo. He was my boy. I got him on there. And it was just like, man, let the world see this shit. So we, uh, I put it up on my YouTube. So if you, anyone wants to go see it, go check it out. And then we'll probably end up doing something kind of similar to this. It's just a very weird, you know, kind of weird comedy like we do. And, uh, yeah, man. Hopefully, fucking, we can do it indie style. I like where your head's at. You're totally right. That's the move. Fucking a, man. Give the fans a chance what they want to see. I mean, I loved everything you guys did yeah. in the past. I want to see some more shit. Totally. You're right. You're 100 percent right. I think that's what we're gonna do. Perfect, man. That way, you know, start at the con right there, letting people know what's gonna happen. Get Andy on the computer. Throw that shit out there. And let's let's see something new come out. I, you're totally right, dude. I'm not even gonna argue with you. You're correct, sir. Now, one thing I want to talk about with uh, you and Andy is uh, I seen you guys on Ancient Aliens with uh, Action Bronson, man. Yeah, that was uh, that was your first dab hit, right there. No, it was my second dab hit, and uh, I think it was I think it was my last dab hit. To be quite honest with you, fuck that shit. That is, you know what? I told Action, I was like, dude, I can't smoke your alien weed, bro. And he's like, nah, you got this. And it was the end of the show, and we had been shooting all day. So I was like, all right, fuck it. I'll take one, you know, fuck at the end of the day. And, bro, I got so fucking high 
I got so high that it was like worse than taking acid. Like I'm not lying. I would rather take acid than do a dab hit. I'm not even joking either. Like you ruined my day. And I remember <clears throat> I, I felt like the walls were closing in and I started getting a panic attack and shit. And like then all of a sudden they put all these cameras in my face and, and I freaked out and I left and I called the Uber or I didn't call Uber. I, I texted, you know what I'm saying? I got an Uber and fucking left. And the producers of the show were like, of Ancient Aliens, were like, where'd you go? I was like, I went home. I can't even handle that shit. Fuck that. And they, <laughs> they got pissed at me too. I, I tend to piss off networks a lot. So I pissed off Vice and I pissed off, uh, Adult Swim. Maybe I should learn from those mistakes. Um, but yeah, I left that. Dude. What can you do though, dude? Doing a dab, it's like smoking fucking 30 joints in one hit. Bro, it's too much, dude. It's too much. Like I smoked weed my whole life. It's too much. You know, that's the craziest thing with weed nowadays, though. I mean, I remember back in the day, you'd fucking pick some seeds out of a goddamn joint coming down from Mexico. Now, weed's, yeah. like, a, weed's like a fucking science. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's crazy, the shit that they put into it. Yeah, it's you know what? It's gotten too, like, fuck, and it's gotten too, like, I feel like an old person saying this shit, but, like, it's gotten too fucking strong, dude. I like, you know, I like the sm I like the process of rolling one up and, you know, fucking smoking with your boys and passing it around. It's like you just need one hit. It's not even like that's just too crazy. It's like forty percent THC now or some shit. Thirty percent. I mean, <clears throat> I grew up on strong weed. Don't get me wrong, but like dabs and like uh, shatter and shit. It's just it's too strong for me personally. You know. Oh fucking a! I agree a hundred percent. I can remember back in the day, I could smoke joint after joint. Now with this new shit, it's like. One hit, I'm like, I had enough. Yeah, dude, I don't give a fuck if I sound like a pussy. That shit's too much, dog. I, they, I, these kids growing up on that shit, what's next? They're going to shoot weed up in their dick? What's next, bro? Well, they got the fucking the moon rocks where they take the shatter and the dab and the oil and the weed and the keef and they make it into one big chunk of nonsense. Fuck, man, I'm, I'm good on that. <laughs> So when you uh, when you head out to Detroit, are you, you planning on trying any of their uh, going to their weed there, going to any of the dispensaries or? Yeah, I'm always I always like checking out the weed scene. I always like checking out the weed scene in different cities because you know here in Cali we've been on it for years, man. We've been like legal weed basically. Well, it just well it just became to where you could just walk into a store with an ID. You don't even need a license. You know, for the last like ten years we've been having it to where you could just get a license, and it's so funny like. You go to the fake doctor, and you're like, I have anxiety. They don't even look at you. You could be like, yeah, I'm afraid of fucking cat, and they'll give you a prescription. Um, and so, yeah, I always like to see what different states, like how they got it, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'll probably check it out, you know what I mean? Depends how much time I have. Like, I'll, I, I, I like checking out the weed dispensary because usually some motherfuckers will hook us up. They'll be like, hey, you know, come down to our shop. We'll take care of you, you know, yada, yada. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, it, it's different in every state. You, you got different things to try out, different strains. Now yeah, that dude, it's a trip, man. Yeah. Now that's one thing you, you I, I I think that might be interesting for you. Is there any chance of ever coming up with a Simon Rex strain? I've done it. We came up with the Dirt Nasty strain a while ago, but it, what's funny is that like those two words aren't synonymous with good weed, like dirt, right, and nasty. <laughs> like people that know who Dirt Nasty is might think it's funny, but to your average consumer, no one wants to buy weed called Dirt. <laughs> yeah, so sure. we've tried it before. I got. A, I'm part owners of a rolling paper company called White Boys Rolling Paper. I, I'm gonna bring some product out there. So I'm a. Uh, yeah, me and my boy started a rolling paper company. He's from Miami, so we just did White Boys Rolling Paper. So, <clears throat> um, I did that. You know, and I, we start. We also worked with some people. Like I'm friends with Burner. He's like a famous weed rapper guy from the Bay Area. He's from like he started like a lot of this weed movement uh, with cookies. He's like a brand name, and he he had the Girl Scout cookies and all these strains. And uh, so uh, we've uh, I've dabbled with that shit. It just never really took off because my name, dude. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, you don't know if I can walk in. And let me get that dirt. Yeah, it don't sound right, but hey, we're not even know. Maybe I was saying I should come out with some, you know, because people like me, like when I smoke, I want dirt weed. Like I want the, like we were just talking about, I want that old school seeds in my shit, like Sensamila, outdoor organic in the sun, not some chemical ass fucking laboratory weed. 
So uh, maybe that's what it'll be, is like some dirt weed, you know? Dirt yeah. nasty weed for the OG, for the old heads. Yeah, some old school shit for sure. You know? Now you, now, you were saying you got a different project musically coming out. You got these Rolling Papers company. What what else you got going on? Um, I just did a kid's album. I was like, man, I was sitting around, like, because sometimes it's hard to get inspired to do music. So I was like, fuck, what could I do different? I've already done all the shit about taking drugs and getting my dick sucked and all the dumb shit, you know. I was like, let me do something different. So I went and did a complete 180, and I did an album for children, for kids, right, with, like, morals in it, like, you know, brush your teeth, go to bed, like, it's as a joke, right, so I did it, and I fucking ended up selling it to this production company, I don't want to t- say too much, because it's still in the works, but, so I did a kids album for fun, <laughs> just for, like, because a lot of my fans now, they got kids, you know, right. they're in their 30s, and shit. so I made a kids album for something that you, the parents could bump on the way to school, and that the kids will like it, too. So instead of dirt nasty, it's squeaky clean. There you go, man. So I, so I yeah, so I just did that. I'm, we're gonna do some new three loco shit. I just shot a movie, shot a movie that'll be coming out next year, an indie movie. Um, can't remember the name of it right now. Fuck, what was the name of the movie? Oh, I can't remember, but I just shot a movie. Same old shit, bro. Just hustling and fucking rustling, you know. You know, now's the time for uh, for a kids album to come out, dude. One of the Wiggles just had a heart attack on stage. Oh, shit, is that, it was the Wiggles, the Carts, those stuffies, it's like a fucking, like a Georgie the Kid, like a, what's that called, um, Snuffy Luffagus or some shit, what is he, like a fucking two-headed llama, it's like, what's him gonna call it, uh, fuck, Tickle Me Elmo. Nah, uh, Wiggles are like, uh, they're like five dudes that do, uh, kid songs and go on tour and shit, I guess they're, you got young kids or something, oh. one of them just had a heart attack See. on stage. Damn, that sucks. Rest in peace. Oh, did he die? Nah, he's in the hospital, but now's the time for Squeaky Clean to take that spot. Yeah, dude. Yeah, relax in peace to that homie Wigglesworth. Now, uh, yeah, you're right. So, Squeaky Clean, because you feel in for him, whatever. And also, um, yeah, man, it's crazy. Oh, shit, the cops are rolling by. Oh, it's so cool. I'm not doing anything illegal. Um, You know that instinct when cops roll by? It's his instinct like, oh, shit, but I'm not doing nothing wrong. Uh, and yeah, man, that's it, bro. Kids, it's all about the kids, you know. No, nah, yeah, like you were saying when the cops drive by, dude. There's nothing more fucking paranoia. Regardless, I'll be at a stoplight. I'll see a cop. I'll flip the fuck out for no reason. Yeah, start looking all guilty. Start yeah. fucking fixing. Like it, I always take my hat off so, to let them know I'm really white. You know? <laughs> yeah, man, it's just a habit. You never know. Dude, I don't trust cops. It shouldn't be that way. We're scared of police. You know what I mean? Especially out here in L.A., dude. Fuck, cops. Oh, I don't want them to hear me. Uh, see, I'm scared of them. Yeah, exactly. Don't be afraid of the police, dude. Sitting in the RV, got to quiet down and shit. You're just sitting there doing an interview over the phone. Yeah, no, but I do look guilty. If you were to see this shit, it looks like Scooby-Doo fucking stoner van. And I'm just posted up in the back, so it looks shady as fuck. But I'm not doing any illegal activities, Your Honor. I mean, officer. <laughs> Now, you mentioned you just shot a new movie. What are the chances of uh, another scary movie coming out? Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen, bro. The last one, Scary Movie 5, came out, and that shit didn't do too well. And, uh, you know, Anna Ferris, she was such a big part of it. And she, when she, when she left it, she was like the main girl in all the scary movies except for Part 5. Once she left, I think it was kind of over. They tried to run it for Part 5 without her. And it just didn't really work out too well. You know, um, no disrespect to Ashley Tisdale. She's funny, but Anna Ferris was the movie, you know. And then, <clears throat> so we did part five, like, damn, that was already like four years ago. And that's maybe longer. And that she came out and just went, went, went. It didn't do well, so I think it's over. I think it's over. But you never know, dude. You never know. And you know who was produced, was the producer of that movie? Who's that? Harvey Weinstein. Well, what? Harvey Weinstein. Well, fuck, man, you know, I was looking for something to do these days. Hey, good point. Well, people want to follow up with you. They want to uh, know more about the music. They want to see what you're up to. You got a website, social media. What do you do? Yeah, uh, you got Instagram at SimonRex415. 415 is the San Francisco area code. 
that's that's home for me. And then Twitter, Simon Rex. I should have them all the same, but somebody took my name on fucking uh, Instagram and they won't give it to me. He tried to charge me ten grand the, at Simon Rex. Some dude, I hit him on DM. I was like, bro, let me get my name. Five. He's like ten grand. I'm like, man, fuck you. Uh, and Simon Rex on Twitter, and then Dirt Nasty Music dot com is where you can go see all the shows like where i'm performing and shit yeah it's all the same shit it's all up there and then i just started a clothing line actually too called uh simon rex styles which is some funny like regalia shit i did a kind of like a streetwear line with my boy so <clears throat> if you go to um if you go to simon rex dot com r-e-x-t-i-l-e-s like just like it sounds simon rex styles there's some dope new gear we got up there so yeah, man. Just, you know, hustling, bro. I'm a hustler, dude. You got to do what you got to do. Fucking A, man. It's glad to see you, you know, keeping busy, doing different things. I mean, you have to. Ain't no one going to do it for you. You know what I mean? You got to stay busy. You go, you be sitting around out here waiting for the phone to ring. You got to make shit happen, bro. So I got my, you always got to have your hand in 10 different baskets. You know what I mean? Now with 2020 here, man, is there any chance of a dirt nasty tour? Yeah, I'm actually working on one right now. Um, uh, I'm working on putting one together right now. I got to. I don't know when this is coming out, but I got a show on February 5th, I want to say, in Portland. Um, February 5th or 6th for the 20th anniversary of Dante's. And then I'm going to be doing a show out that way in Detroit after. It's all up on the website and on the Instagram and shit. So, yeah, I'm always doing shows here and there. You know what I mean? Me and Mickey usually do uh, tours together. So he went and did one by himself at the beginning of the year. So I'm, I don't know what's going to happen. But, yeah, we usually do Australia. We usually do U.S. Trying to do Europe this year. We'll see. Perfect, man. I appreciate your time. February 7th through the 9th. Right. One of the few chances to see Simon Rex in person. Get some shit signed. Talk to him. Get some rolling papers. Find out about his clothing line. See what else is next man. for him. Yo, I'll sign some titties. Come on out. That's it, baby. I'm, oh, yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, buddy. Have a good one. You too. Take care. Hey.